winter probably it depends i mean it's good to have four seasons because now too much summer you know when i used i used to live in california i was happy to see some clouds from time to time so i mean having four seasons is not that bad to be honest no so yeah but it's not four seasons anymore it's like bloody cold <laughs> it's a different yeah, story yeah man <laughs> Uh, but you go, you go also ski. In do you like skiing or no? Me, I, I can ski, but no, nobody can ski at home. My kids, my wife, uh, we go sledding, uh, and we're just. Push by the way, we're just. Like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. You know, we do like extreme sledging. With the we have actually, I mean, you cannot see it right now because it's dark. But twenty minutes from my home, you can go skiing, snowboarding, sledding, like right. from December to April. And the good thing is in April, we can go surfing and skiing at the same time. So, guys, we're almost ready. You know, I'm going to share the link on LinkedIn about mm -hmm. the event. Yeah. We're going live and we can start. Just give me a minute. Sounds good. And Nick, do we have like a order of people that's supposed to talk or just like whoever? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know, guys. No, everyone would be first. So, just open the discussion and then we can mm -hmm. go from there. So, let, let, let me do that. Okay. Okay, well, can, can you stop sharing so I can share my screen and we can start? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, no, sure. uh, yeah, yeah, no worry, I'll do it on my end. Can you just go? Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'll do it. Okay, guys, do you see my screen? Sure. Okay. Okay, guys, so thank you for joining our webinar. It's one more and the year is over, but this is probably uh, one which we're going to cover all the topics, you know, for Q4, because here is the title, you know, Q4 Success Recipe Accurate Accounting, Taxes, Logistics, All Amazon Toolkit and Affiliate Marketing. Today with me are Andre Tan from Refersion. They're actually into affiliate marketing. This is something that they've been doing for a long time, but this is the first time I have a company which is expert in referral and affiliate marketing. And they're going to talk about what they do, what they do with Amazon and other e-commerce sellers. And they're going to give you some tips because this is the best type of marketing if you know how to do it because you pay by results. Uh, then we have also Burak from Forsgate. He's a close partner of mine and he's master in logistics. He, used, he lived in China for seven years. He's going to introduce you more, but logistics are one of the most important parts of e-commerce if you don't have your logistics sorted you know you'll be in big trouble i've been selling in, in europe for 10 years so that was why our main issue also we have elon main from a to x they're the masters of automating accounting and knowing your numbers and having accurate accounting is something that you must have if you want to expand globally also we have vanessa hung from carbon six she joined them recently carbon six is a company which is acquiring e-commerce tools. I've made them in February when they're in stealth mode right now. They're the most popular and more, most most interesting company in the space. And I am your host today. I'm Nick Penneff. I'm the partnership manager with Hello Tax and I'm the founder of Extreme Power Brands. And just to give you some more feedback about what we're going to talk about today. But before that, we're going to mention our gold sponsor, which is my partnership agency. We, we have a network of like thousand service providers in companies in the space. And what we do is we help companies to grow through partnership by connecting people or providing them know-how on how to do that. And because we love to give giveaways, we're giving away one free partnership audit for a company. You need to be a service provider to qualify. And the value for that is thousand US dollars. And here is the agenda for today. First, Ewan is gonna talk about A2X and why knowing your numbers is essential to scale. If you don't know your numbers, you cannot make data-driven decisions. Then Burak is gonna talk about tips for safeguarding your Amazon supply chain strategy in Q4. Q4 is almost, half of it is over, but still you're waiting for Black Friday holiday season. So you need to know all these tips. After that, Vanessa is gonna talk about how to maximize your profits and efficiency with the best Amazon toolkit, which is Carbon 6. Then Andre is going to talk about affiliate marketing, how to overcome the rising CAC. And then I'm going to talk about Europe, why you need to expand in Europe. And if you're not doing that, then you have 400 plus million reasons 
it's coins to do that. And of course, at the end, we're going to have the Q&A session. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. If you need to leave, don't worry, we're recording the webinar. We're going to have it uh, live on YouTube so we can uh, write your question. We're going to answer that at the end. And our first speaker today is Elon. So thank you everyone for sacrificing your sleep. I know that you wake up early, but I would like to tell that everybody it's 7 a.m. in New Zealand. And the last time we did the webinar with Ewan, it was 5 a.m. So she's always early bird and that's why we have her here. But not only that, uh, she's going to tell you more about A2X and what they do because they're the best in what they do in the space. So thank you again, Ewan, and tell us more about you and A2X. Cool. Thanks so much, Nick. Yeah, and 7 a.m. is a lot more friendly than 5. So uh, thank you for the introduction. But yes, I am Alan from A2X, which was founded in 2014. A2X works with thousands of e-commerce sellers, as well as the top e-commerce accounting and bookkeeping practices to increase e-commerce financial visibility while saving hours a month. So you're listening in today because you want the secret to success, you want to scale your business, and I'm here to tell you that accurate accounting needs to be part of that plan. So before you tune out, uh, let me tell you why. So a common misconception is that if you have more money coming in than going out, your business is growing. But did you know that? 32% of e-commerce businesses fail because they run out of cash, 29% fail because of cost and pricing imbalance, and others fail because they try to scale too quickly. Profitable businesses know their numbers inside and out, and they use them to successfully grow their business. So sure, there are businesses that can grow rapidly overnight, but to survive, they need financial data they can rely on. The problem is Amazon accounting is difficult. You have thousands of transactions to account for. Settlements can span months. There's complicated tax data and there's no accurate source of truth. And I could go on. Amazon accounting is really hard. So if you, if you can't relate to that statement, it probably means you're ignoring your bookkeeping. So lots of businesses do this. <laughs> if you think it's easy, you're most likely doing it wrong and you're creating best guess entries. Or if you are trying to do it right, you're spending hours a month trying to do it manually. So with all the, of these, can you see my screen okay? Sorry, I just went all funny on my laptop, classic. So with all of these complications, it's uh, no wonder that sellers avoid their accounting or cut corners but this comes with some pretty serious risks. The great news is A2X is the solution to all of these problems. With A2X, you'll automate an extremely time-consuming monthly process. You'll always pay the right amount in tax. You'll know which of your SKUs are profitable and which are not. You'll know if you're getting a return on your advertising and you'll get a better view of your financials. So you'll have an accurate profit and loss and you'll have higher confidence in the accuracy of your books, which actually means a higher exit price if you ever decide to sell your business. Okay, so how does A2X solve these e-commerce accounting problems? So I wanted to just show you a quick example of kind of what you see in your bank account or your sales channel, and then actually what's happening and uh, what you can get with good data. So in this, this is an Amazon example, and it's quite similar for all um, sales channels. But what happens is, as you know, when you're selling on Amazon, you're paid uh, this lump sum into your bank account. Now, a lot of sellers code this deposit here as sales, but that is, and they call it cash accounting, but that's never right with e-commerce. And that's for, you know, for a whole lot of reasons. And that's because before the money is paid into your bank account, um, there's all of these transactions that are occurring and they're added or deducted before you get that final deposit. And so this table on the right here shows you exactly what's going on and it's all broken out line item by line item. And you can see that your sales are correctly um, coded and they're not just the, the net deposit. 
tax is accounted for, you've got your shipping income, reimbursements, all of your transactions are accounted for. So how does A2X actually work? So A2X automates your Amazon accounting by transforming your raw, your raw sales data into accurate entries um, into QuickBooks or Xero. So it categorizes sales, fees, taxes, refunds, and more, and organizes the transactions into summaries. And then these summaries are posted into your accounting system and they match perfectly to that deposit in your bank account. Now, it also, if you do, you know, you might have sales for November and December, A2X will break those out and post them into the correct um, monthly period, giving you accurate accrual accounting, which again is essential if you ever want to sell your business. So this allows you to reconcile payouts in just one click. Every time you're paid from Amazon, A2X will create an entry to reconcile to the deposit. A2X maps the different transaction types to the correct ledger accounts within your accounting software so that you have accurate financial statements, such as your profit and loss. So why A2X? A2X is the most accurate solution on the market and it can save you time and money. We have the largest global network of Amazon accountants who are supporting sellers. And if you want an accountant who does understand e-commerce accounting, we have a directory of e-commerce experts on the A2X website. So you can go and fill in a match me form and we'll match you with the right accountant who will get you the most out of your business. We also have the best support in the industry. So our support is a manned by e-commerce accountants and bookkeepers, and you'll receive a response in hours, not days. So when it comes to paying tax, making financial decisions, calculating margins, or even valuing your business, close enough is not good enough. So find out why successful Amazon businesses use and trust A2X to automate their accounting. So just head to the website and you can start a free trial. Thank you. Okay, well, th that was very, very fast, like a New Zealand shark in the winter. <laughs> Get it done. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Go but, <laughs> yeah, but you know, yeah, I mean, accounting should be like that. No bullshit, you know, just straight and forward. Why do you need accounting? How they can help out? As simple as that, because no numbers are numbers. No, you cannot, they, they're not pretty or ugly. No, they're either accurate or not accurate. So if you don't, if you know your numbers, you can make decisions, you can make forecasting. If you don't know your numbers, you have no idea what you're doing. You're swimming in the dark and probably a shark is waiting for you to actually snap your business. But anyway, so uh, Ewan, they have a lot of clients. We've done a lot of stuff with them. So I know for a fact why people like them and I haven't heard a single bad review for them because they have technology and managed service. And obviously that's very important. But of course, taxes are good. But if you don't have a product, you don't need Ewan, you don't need me, you don't need anybody. So unless you have a logistics partner who can get your uh, product from A to point B, he have nothing. So th this is why we have Brock because he's an expert in the in the logistics and freight forwarding. He's gonna tell you more about himself, what he does, and some tips on what you should look for in Q4 and Nick, in general. Did you, so, did you call a logistic expert? Like yeah, <laughs> yeah man, aren't you? Are, yeah, man. Oh yeah, you oh, are, you're talking about me. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of yeah, pressure. Well, yeah, <laughs> right. well, 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 one thing, just to let you know, guys, the last webinar that we did with Brock, I think it was was December. He was in the warehouse in LA because he was opening yeah. the warehouse. Yeah, San, no, actually, so it was California. So yeah, exactly. He's okay. He's just you know humble, you know. He's an expert. No, so no, thank tell you. us more, you know. Oh man, I don't know where to start. It's been bumpy year, last two years, you know, with international logistics, the um, you know the COVID. Um, like inflation right now, you know, the, the buyer's habits are changing, the way doing international business is changing. You know, when I say that, uh, you know, all the e-commerce business and environment is also changing. It used to be people source product from China, send it to Amazon, they sell it, you know, they do different kind of tricks, um, such as add to cards or, you know, buy and reviews. And all those things are like gone right now. Um, seriously, you know, the market has been also, US market has been, 
um, washed out with uh, really unquality products from China um, with our good listings and stuff. If people will be thinking like why he's talking about not logistics, but these things, but I think this is all like connected. So now brands are becoming like, you know, companies, private label products are becoming like more brands or they should become a brand. Last two years, uh, aggregators have been very active in the marketplace, um, acquiring brands, merge with different companies. Uh, you know, a lot of people sold their business and exit the business with um, quite a good amount of money. Uh, but when it comes to the the total, um, if you look at like a, the general idea of like the run, the way to run the business, as Ellen mentioned, like you know, people need to know the numbers. Uh, but same time, you need to probably create like plan B, plan C, plan D. Um, you know, Wanessa has been dealing with so many complaints or uh, problems, you know, with the marketplaces. Uh, you see a lot of different things, Nick, like people trying to expand to different marketplaces from US to Canada or Canada to UK. They don't have VAT or they want to ship it to, uh, you know, from Germany and they don't have the, you know, the, the, the tax compliance or they want to, you know, consolidate the shipments from China to ship to a couple of different Amazon marketplace, um, a couple of Amazon FBA different locations, like, uh, you know, half of the container goes to Dallas, half of the container goes to California. So all these things are people are actually start thinking about it. It's getting harder and harder to make money on, you know, on Amazon business. The competition is really uh, extremely aggressive and there are new marketplaces coming out, like such as like Walmart, uh, some people, if they do like some, you know, handmade stuff, Etsy is getting popular. Uh, you know, Target is becoming like, you know, more aggressive in the marketplaces. But when it comes to, uh, you know, selling online, if you don't have a good supply chain management anymore, you cannot be successful because the things have changed in the marketplace. What I mean with that is, you know, you used to purchase product from China manufactured in 30 days, ship the Amazon FBA in 30 days, you start selling it, it checks in immediately. And then, you know, within 75 to 90 days, you start getting your money back. Now it's up to like 180 days. Some of the products, if it is overweight or, you know, up to three weeks ago, if Amazon, if you wake, if you woke up and especially in the US and you see that your inventory limits went 70% down, then you had a bunch of product manufactured in China before the Chinese New Year, before the before the Christmas. I don't even say like four quarter anymore. Who can believe? By the way, it's November fifteenth already. You know, isn't it crazy? Like this year. Um, so I see Vanessa is like shaking the head. Uh, but but you know, so many things are happening, and then most of our clients now they start asking us whether we can switch FBM from FBA. So people have inventory um, stuck in China or three PLs. We also um, do warehousing service, you know, in US or Canada or UK, Europe. Um, a lot of people, they start asking us like, you know, um, if we can, we have the, like some of the, our customers, like they have inventory, but then they're like, hey, can you also do FBM fulfillment? Because they cannot, they don't have enough inventory, but they are running out with some specific SKU. I think, one of the biggest problems a lot of companies or brands are facing right now is that Amazon changing things the next day and then you're not prepared for that and you really need to have like plan B, plan C, plan D. So it's not even more, it's not anymore like international shipping, but it's also supply chain and more importantly, like the connecting 3PLs, using the technology, understanding where is your shipment. And so many people have moved out from where they lived before, you know, so People are traveling around the world. Some of my friends are, are customers. They work in Bali. Uh, they sell on Amazon Australia or they move to uh, Argentina. They sell on UK. So the time difference changing, the, the way of doing business changing. So um, digital freight is getting like most, one of the most important topic, I think, to see uh, all your shipments, the data. Uh, it's not anymore like, okay, I'm going to manufacture like 3000 gift set and send it to you know, Amazon FBA. But you need to understand the data. Amazon is also paying a lot of attention to that. If you go to your brand, uh, like brand management page on Amazon, you can see the demographic who buying for what to who, um, what is the age of the people. So you can actually customize a lot of different things on your listing, and you should be doing a lot of A/B testings, a lot of influencer marketing coming in. So it's getting like a 
a, a really like it's not anymore like a side hassle in my opinion um you know i see a lot of like uh you know youtubers or like people on instagram or facebook uh work 20 minutes from your pool get like 500 dollars a day that's not happening anymore i mean I, I think it never happened um so the long short short is really important to understand your cost um it doesn't matter what it is like either your purchase price either your shipping price or tax but one of the most important thing is that to understand what where the market is going and which marketplaces people can actually enter where they're with their existing products you know amazon is really encouraging companies or people to expand internationally but one of the most important thing is also sourcing from outside of china is also getting popular however we don't really see a, a real action like you know um a couple of people did like a sourcing trip to india uh, mexico uh, vietnam even like bradley from helium town was in a different conferences like in korea vietnam uh, some other company countries also I cannot remember really so it's really getting global uh, but I think really it's important to have like a, a right freight partner um, with additional services uh, not only warehousing not only like you know good prices like the digital track but I think to understand the general uh, way of doing business for Amazon and you know kind of respecting and understand the amazon rules and act and work the way amazon is actually requiring and last year amazon global logistics had become one of the top player in this industry um which they really ruined a lot of people's life with very late delays uh lost the containers i don't know how they did that honestly like how can you like lose 20 tons of a container it's, it's pretty pretty tough but they did it like you know amazon kind of keeps losing things um it doesn't matter it's a container it's in product in the webinar it's a product in the warehouse um so I think it's important to understand and choosing the right freight partner um who supports the technology who understands and collect in the right data if you're selling a good product last one or two years and you want to see when you ordered last time what was your landing cost what is the unit price per uh, per uh, landing cost per kilogram or like per unit or you know understanding the expectations of the amazon world can change the next day or you want to expand globally so i think all these things are people should be considering um you know before they place the new order fourth quarter is already here um, but chinese new year is coming it's big news like you know 20 20th of january i think it's this year but most of the factories will be leaving so if you guys haven't done yet the the new year's planning it's really the right time and definitely make sure that you understand the the exchange rate has changed roughly like 12 percent. so um you know Chinese RMB depreciated against US dollar so that's like an advantage for a lot of big buyers however the the cost of living and the inflation in China is extremely high probably 25 to 30 percent so when you place the new order make sure that you understand and then change the requirements of you know the way you purchase the items maybe think of shit on the trade terms Chinese companies are going through a rough time because of the you know the demand is really down because of the inflation around the world and then the recession uh, you know people are scared of the recession so they want to keep the money in their hands so long long story short look at the big picture step back and make your plannings um, as as soon as possible probably that's it Nick from my side with what's going on with the world and then the logistics yeah. I didn't want to really I didn't uh, really want to talk about by the way like a boring topic like what happened to prices one month ago no next man. month I think a lot of people are considered like they understand that but I think the what is the most important is like what is really going on in today's world yeah I think this is the most important because you can make like a strategic decisions otherwise I mean pricing you know it goes up down and you know. all right now the container price like 1k i think last year yeah, it was 20 like 000. yeah i mean so it's it's crazy but you know if you have a good strategy you can obviously navigate in the different reasons and you mentioned about amazon making life harder for sellers and that's why i know we have vanessa here not only for carbon six but she's the the perfect 
person in the space who can solve your issues with Amazon. And I'll let her introduce herself, but Carbon6 is just uh, the new company that she's going to help out. But she's been helping out sellers for a long time with one of the worst topics, which is not taxes, of course. Amazon is even harder than taxes. So she's going to tell more about her. And thank you for, for being today here, Vanessa. And all. This is the second time we're trying to do something with Carbon6, so it's finally good to be here. And tell us more about you guys and what is your mission at Carbon6 right now. And by the way, you're muted. Yeah, Vanessa. perfect. Um, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, super happy to be here. So um, my name is Vanessa Hong. I've been in the space for almost six years now, helping sellers to solve their issues in Seller Central. And also, very recently, I joined Carbon6 as a community ambassador. And my role here is just basically bring good content, valuable information to help sellers throughout their journey, because what we're trying to accomplish in, in Carbon6 is creating an ecosystem for sellers to achieve success. And that ecosystem, it does only come, not only comes with um, the right tools and the right, right resources, but also a community that supports and educate sellers uh, to win their game in online selling. For now, we're, we, we have tools on Amazon and in the future, we hope to span to other marketplaces. So today, we I'm going to be covering a little bit about maximizing profits and efficiency with the best Amazon toolkit. So one of the biggest things on you guys touch a little bit on the cost increase, the higher competition, marketplace regulation. There are many, many different areas in the business where costs are getting high, uh, higher costs. We have a shortage of labor. We have very complex um, dynamics in the marketing uh, like area and environment where the cost per click click is getting higher. So one of the things that I believe it is extremely important for sellers to understand and address right now are the inefficiencies in their business. So one thing that we always get into, you know, webinars and courses and masterminds where they share the latest strategies to win more, to drive revenue, but very little we pay attention to the things that are already happening in our account and we are not addressing or we are not targeting proactively to make that more efficient. So one of the things that I'm going to be speaking about are the best Amazon tools to increase profits. And I decided to go into two because those are the ones that are the easiest for you to let's say, review your numbers now that we are in Q4 and hopefully with this review and this like audit that you do, get into a better position now uh, next year. But there are two things that we I think that you're leaving money on the table or you're losing money by not being optimized for or, or having the most efficiency. So the first one is inventory management. And for that, we have an amazing tool called SoStock. So you can go to SoStock.com and you can learn more. But one of my favorite things about SoStock is that we have free resources for sellers. So probably if, if you are selling on Amazon and you still don't have a complex operation, you don't have a lot of excuse, and you're good just by placing orders and restocking with a simple spreadsheet, that's fine. But when you get into a more complex side of the business where you have a high selling product with a lot of inventory, different suppliers that you really need to be efficient by maximizing orders and sending the right amount of uh, units to Amazon so you don't get penalized for with the IPI or with the restock limits, which is a completely different story. So, so is there to help. It's there to help you to do the most efficient and profitability, like to, to see profitability in a different sense with inventory management, because it also helps you to, you know, minimize costs by sending the right amount at the right time and taking care of your metrics. That's the thing that the software do, does, right? And that's amazing. But we also have 
uh, an amazing resource page, which is SOSOG slash tools. And there are six tools here. Today, I, I want to focus on two of them, which are the ones that the people that are watching right now, if you're not using SOSOG for inventory management because you think it's not the right time, you can still use these tools completely for free. And my one of my favorite ones is the FBA calculator. So starting with the FBA calculator, there are many different tools like this ones in the marketplace. There are every software has their calculator. Amazon itself has their own uh, FBA calculator. But one of the things that I that is new about the sell stock one is that they take in consideration the velocity that you're gonna sell that item, the expenses that you're gonna have with marketing, and putting down every single um every single area of the shipping and logistics that I, is there so you really get down to your numbers and really understand where is every single penny going so i have here an example as you can see this is my product i put the dimensions they tell me what is the fee what is the product type because there are different prototypes then what's the time of the year that i'm selling so they can see what's the number between october and december which is q4 and then from january to september is a different number based on the storage fee that Amazon puts but now it, this is a cool part and i do think that sellers need to get way better at understanding the cost per unit that they have because they say like oh we spend I don't know, $3,000 in storage or in our 3PL today, uh, this month, right? But what does that really mean is how many units, how much per unit they're charging you to send that. Once we understand our numbers in a unit base, then is where we can start optimizing and seeing which is the, the skew or the unit that is losing money or where we are making the most amount of money. So they have the ability to put freight, 3P, repackaging, shipping to Amazon, and other expenses. So as you can see here, I put the example of my product. And then they ask, they ask you for the velocity. Uh, how many units you serve per month, both organically and, and paid with advertising, and how much um, I'm willing to spend every month to sell those amount of units. So with that, now I have a total of the money that I'm that I'm uh, expending on advertising, and this becomes a whole number. Because in my experience, I've seen that many sellers get their advertising fees on one side, then they get the three P the three PL on the other side, the storage fees on Amazon on the other side. But it's very unlikely they understand how much is that costing per unit. So this calculator have it. And at the end, it, the calculator will tell you what's the break even tacos, which is amazing. So, you know, understanding really the advertising there to get th to those numbers to sell 400 units. And this is, this was my example. And then each line of costs. So it's telling me my gross profit margin is 65%, which you will think, oh, that's amazing. But then the net profit margin is 24. And when I take this with the marketing, when I take out the PPC that I'm spending, I just get 11%. So I only have $2.28 and 20, 28 cents of profit, which for some sellers will be amazing. And in, in a percentage, it's like, okay, 10% is okay. But from some other, it's not okay. So you will see like, okay, maybe I need to get rid of the SKU. And that is where the decisions coming up to next year, you will get smarter in that way and you will really find the inefficiencies in your business right now again this tool is amazing the second tool that we have in SoStock is the master carton calculator which is in my experience one of the biggest ways people are wasting money without even knowing why because they don't um they don't question the status quo one of the things that the tool does is that as you can see here, when you send inventory in pallets or even small freight, it can be anything, you send in a carton. And how do we choose a carton? We normally get uh, go to a store here, like you go to Uline or, or Home Depot or USPS and you buy the biggest box that is, is there, right? Let's say 24 by 24 by 24. That's the biggest one. And I'll try to put as many 
items and products in that box as possible so I can set the most amount of Amazon or to Amazon. But that's not true. And what we have in this uh, master and carton calculator is the system will ask you for the unit, the, the size unit of your product, right? And then the palette that you're sending with the cartons, the, the weight and the sizes of your carton, and then it will tell you what are the recommendations. So as you can see here, I have that currently, it's costing me $7.88 to send per unit, but now the algorithm and this calculator, what is uh, suggesting is that I have a different layout on my shipping carton boxes unit. So now it, it will only cost me $4.76 to send that inventory. How? How is that save impossible? So basically, they tell me which is the carton that I need to, to build in order to send the most amount of units in the less amount of pallets. So before I was sending 20, 200 cartons in 20, uh, and each carton had 20 units. Now with the new uh, arrangement that they're giving me and the new dimensions, they will, they is telling me that each carton will have 32 units and then I will only need to send 125 instead of 200. That's already an $11,200 savings just in shipping. And, and this is where you, this is what I'm talking about the inefficiencies guys. This is something that is already happening in your account and you probably don't know, especially if you're relying in 3PLs or freight forwarders to put that those pallets together. They will try to use the cartons they have and, in, and put the, the most amount of units that they could fit in your, in your box, but that's not necessarily the most efficient way. So then they have the pallet saving. If you're sending pallets, sometimes you can send small parcels and you still get the most amount of uh, money by using or maximizing the space in that carton. And this is what I see. So before the pallet was costing me 1500 to send, now it's it will cost me with a new arrangement, it will cost me 287. So that's uh, you know 1200 of savings. And in total, if I do things right, in total, I'll, sa I'll save $12,000, which is 41% of all the things that I, that I uh, spent, right? So if you see this, it is amazing. The system gives you a bunch of answers to questions that you don't even know you have, right? That, you know, questioning the status quo there and seeing like, okay, where can I maximize my cartons and the sizes that I need to use in order to send them on someone? So that's in the inventory management part with SoStock, which I believe is one of the most amazing tools in the space. And the second thing that I was uh, talking about was reimbursements. So we are already familiar with reimbursements. Amazon uh, loses or damages a lot of your inventory that is getting into FBA. And for that, we have an amazing tool called Seller Investigators. And they do the audit and they do the reimbursements for you with the top-notch te top -notch technology and having an amazing dashboard when you can see all your numbers there. So if you go to sellerinvestigators.com, you can click on um, set up an audit for your account. Even if you're working right now with another seller provider, um, so, sorry, service provider, if you are already working with another service provider, you can have our audit run through your account and see if that service provider did a good job by, um, finding the most amount of money for you. So we will tell you if they didn't got the most amount of money or, or if they're good, doing a good job. So then it's your decision if you want to enroll with seller investigators or not. They have, again, the best technology, the best dashboard where you can see every single line of reimbursement, what it was um, assigned to for what type of reimbursement was. And for this webinar, we have a promotion. So if you go on the... Uh, bottom of the audit and you see the referral promotion code, you click, you put hello tax. And with that, you get $2,000 free of fees. So you don't have, you won't have any fees on those first $2,000 that we get back for your account. And yeah, with that, well, these are the calculators, the link that I already show you.
and this is the coupon for cell investigators. I hope you guys uh, found this helpful. Running this in Q4 is the best time for you, especially in the inventory management. And I hope this helps you to set up success, be set up for success for next year. Um, thank you so much. These are uh, the links to contact me and contact Carbon6. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, another speed expert with a lot of value. So one thing you know, I'll just mention, so stocked in Chelsea Cohen. She was a speaker in my webinar last year. I spoke with her. With her, she has an amazing software. I connect her with like 10 guys, five of the aggregators. And we had a webinar with her two weeks later, and two of these guys were already acquired. So she probably has the best software in regards to inventory management, and that's why you know Carbon Six acquired the software. So Chelsea is great, and obviously they're acquiring all these great softwares, but they're also acquiring great talent, and that's why Vanessa is there. And of course, uh, this now we're going to talk about something that we've never discussed, affiliate marketing. I've been running an e-commerce business for 10 years across Europe, and five of these years were doing 90% affiliate marketing. And Andre and Refersion are experts in that, so I'll let you introduce yourself, Andre, what you guys do, because a lot of sellers in the space have no idea about your service, and I'm, I think they should learn and t check you out. So thank you again. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Nick. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Andre. I'm on the technical solutions team at Refersion. Um, and for today's presentation, I'll be walking you through how to overcome rising customer acquisition costs using affiliate marketing. Uh, in the Andre, you have a great voice, by the way. Oh, thank I'm you. Reading, I, I'm reading. <laughs> I really thank like you very it, much. I get radio. Um, I, I'm like our radio announcer. People compare me to that. Um, <laughs> okay, beautiful. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, no, no worries. Um, so yeah, in the presentation, uh, you'll learn how to capitalize on this low risk, high return on investment marketing method and achieve considerable gains in brand awareness, organic rankings and revenue. Uh, so let's start with the basics. Uh, what is affiliate marketing? Affiliate marketing is both a term that is interchangeable with performance marketing and a piece of a larger performance marketing umbrella, which includes ambassadors, influencers and affiliates. Affiliate marketing is a type of performance-based marketing in which a business rewards one or more affiliates for each visitor or customer brought in by the affiliate's promotion efforts. Uh, there are three parties involved. First is a brand that has products or services that need to be promoted. Uh, second is the affiliates who are promoting to their audience using tools provided by the brand, such as a referral link or coupon code. And then finally, the third is the audience that becomes consumers of the brand, uh, once they're referred by an affiliate or take action on the brand's website. Brands looking to be successful, drive sales, and increase their market reach in today's increasingly competitive landscape definitely need to implement some form of performance marketing and their overall strategy. Uh, we can dive deeper by asking the question, what are the types of performance marketers? Uh, influencers, affiliates, and ambassadors are all individuals with an audience that collaborate with brands for marketing purposes. The key to understanding the similarities and differences between these groups is knowing which group best fits the goals of your e-commerce brand. Uh, this could mean your brand works with all three groups or remains dedicated to just one. Whoever your brand partners with, the most important factor to keep in mind is your marketing goals, not the labels of the people that you're working with. Uh, that said, let's break these groups down a bit further for more insight into their characteristics. Affiliates are media, websites, newsletters, and blogs. Influencers are any professional content creator uh, with an online audience. And then ambassadors are friends, customers, and organic fans of your brand. Uh, for these next few slides, we'll go over the key industry trends that are impacting businesses today. For starters, affiliate marketing is undeniably on the rise, and it has been for some time now. Uh, we can look at some statistics in 2022. Over 80% of brands have affiliate marketing programs. Just in the last six years, the influencer marketing industry has increased from $1.7 billion to over $16 billion. And finally, 74% of consumers identify word of mouth as a key influencer in their purchasing decision. It might seem obvious to say, but consumers are always wanting recommendations from people they know and trust. In contrast, though, digital advertising is on the decline. Consumers are drowning in a sea of ads from brands they don't know or trust, 
causing them to seek out recommendations from friends and influencers to make purchases. According to SurveyMonkey, nearly three out of four, uh, every four users thinks that there are too many ads and 92% of consumers favor a personal recommendation over a paid advertisement. As the cost of digital advertising creeps upwards, affiliate marketing is becoming a proven digital channel for producing higher revenue and um, return on investment. Brands that use affiliate marketing to leverage the power of affiliates, influencers, and ambassadors uh, reach their markets and build valuable followings. They also experience bigger returns. On average, if influencer and ambassador campaigns bring in six and a half dollars for every dollar spent, while paid advertising only returns two dollars for every dollar spent. Uh, so considering all of this, it's time for e-commerce brands to stop running ad campaigns and start adopting the growth opportunity of affiliate marketing. Uh, so now that we've established that launching and managing an affiliate program is basically in every e-commerce brand's best interest, the question becomes, how do you prepare to do that? When starting an affiliate program, there's many different things that you need to consider. Campaign management, commission attribution and calculation, payment and taxes, and recruiting, just to name a few. It's a lot of work, and there's always more work to be done. Most likely with an affiliate program, you're eventually going to need a platform where you can manage everything in one place. And Refersion is a platform that can make that happen. Uh, Refersion can support your business staying ahead of the competition through its integrations with many major e-commerce platforms, such as Amazon, Shopify, Shopify Plus, WooCommerce, and more. We also have integrations with many crucial marketing tools that can help you expand the scope of your program, such as Recharge for managing recurring, subscri uh, for managing recurring commission charges on subscription orders, and Zapier for automating parts of your program. Finally, we have partnerships with many major publishers such as YieldKit, Sovereign, and Magic Links that can help you reach uh, wider audiences. Uh, real quick, I also wanted to share a success story of a brand utilizing Refersion. That is Goren Bros. Uh, Goren Bros is a modern day global hat brand. They launched their company in 1895, opened their first retail store in 1949, and today have evolved with the e-commerce space and are now a strong digital brand. They're using Refersion to track and manage their affiliate program. And just after one year, we're able to achieve $1 million in affiliate sales. Uh, they've also had over 600 new affiliate registrations and over 10,000 approved affiliate conversions. Uh, along with Goren Bros, we have a whole section dedicated to case studies on our website that I highly recommend checking out uh, to better understand the return on investment and value of Refersion. Uh, just based on that and our proven platform solution, you can expect to see significant results like hundreds of new affiliates, tens of thousands of conversions, and in some cases, more than 300 times your affiliate revenue. Uh, finally, the hot topic today seems to be Amazon. So I wanted to take some time to talk about our new Amazon integration. Uh, people may confuse our Amazon integration with Amazon's own associates program, but they could not be more different. And I'll highlight some key differences. Uh, with Refersion, brands have direct access and relationships with affiliates whereas brands have no visibility or control over the Amazon Associates program. Uh, we offer affiliate performance and conversion tracking, while Amazon offers very little visibility into what's happening. Uh, one huge benefit of using our integration with Amazon is that our tracking provides a 14-day cookie window. That's a great way to catch customers that don't purchase right away, while Amazon only has a 24-hour cookie day window. Another huge benefit of our 24-hour cookie window. Um, another huge benefit of our integration is that the commission rates are set by you, the merchant, which gives you the flexibility to present a much more attractive offer to affiliates uh, in comparison to the much lower rates, usually 4% or lower, that are set by Amazon. On top of all of this, by using Refersion, you organically increase your brand's search ranking within Amazon. And the last thing is that in order to utilize our integration, uh, you must sign up for a Helium 10 account. Uh, which you can do for free. Helium 10 provides a robust set of tools and resources to help Amazon sellers grow their business. And by opening an account with them, you'll get access to Helium 10's data and insights. Uh, so that's all I had for you today. Uh, if there's one key takeaway, it's that affiliate marketing, especially compared to traditional forms of digital advertising, is a low risk, high return on investment channel that you need to be considering or implementing for your brand in today's online landscape in order to combat the cost of the rising cost of acquiring customers. Uh, so I hope if you're not already leveraging an affiliate program for your own brand that you'll consider doing so and start planning for steps. If 
you already have an affiliate program, I hope this presentation gave you some new ideas and best practices to consider. Uh, so thanks, thanks for your time. Okay, thank you, Andre. And I'll just rephrase what Andre, say, Andre said. If you guys are not doing affiliate marketing, you're crazy. You should start right now. I mean, I, I used to run the supplement business. We're doing up to half a million in ad spent on Facebook. Facebook suspended our account and we went to zero sales. And this is what happened after it. We switched to affiliate marketing. And like Andre said, you only pay by results. So if you have a good brand, if you find good affiliates, you can make a lot of money. You only pay by conversion. You don't just burn cash without anything guaranteed. So if you're not doing that, you should definitely do it. And just, you probably saw a great example of partnership, Helium 10 and Refersion, you know, because obviously a lot of people have no idea about affiliate marketing, which is crazy, but this is the truth. And I'm happy that we're having Andre and Refersion because we can actually help out a lot of sellers right now because inflation, increasing ad spend, and all these things can actually help you out if you have a good brand. And right now, you know, this is probably the first webinar that I've done where we had less people and we had more people at the end of the webinar. So you guys have been very quick, very educative and very interesting. So right now I'm going to scare everybody with the taxes for Europe, but you can stay for a little longer because many of you guys have no idea what you're missing out if you're not selling in Europe. So let me share my screen just to give you some reasons why you should do that. And let me introduce myself once more. I mean, I'm running the partnership for Hello Tax, which is a VAT compliance provider for e-commerce sellers in Europe. And as a matter of fact, I used to be a client of Hello Tax. I Nick, used to be mind, selling in Europe. Nick, actually, I want to ask you something. Today, mm -hmm. I heard that, you know, this is like a webinar, so probably have some people some questions. They even start dropping on the Q&A. Mm -hmm. But today, one of my customers asked me, uh, which country in Europe is kind of the best to start the business? Like, what would you recommend before you jump in the presentation? Ger so like Germany, is it Netherlands? It, it depends. You know, usually it's Germany, but it, it depends where the company is based. If you tell me where the company is based, I'll tell you. United right States. Now. They're in the United okay. States. They want to Germ they Germany. To Germany. Germany, you know. I know and I'll mention a little in the presentation why Germany. Okay, perfect. But no, American U.S. companies, they have an advantage when they expand to Europe Perfect. because Germany doesn't, doesn't require translations. You can provide documents in English. They have a specific tax authorities which deals only with U.S. applications. Let's say if you're a U.K. company, you would wait longer compared to U.S. companies. So, so U.S. companies have an advantage when they expand in Europe when they start with Germany. And that's, that's actually, that was what I was about to actually mention in the in the presentation because a lot of sellers don't know that but it's good that you ask that because you know this is very important but besides you know what we mentioned about germany the u.s sellers you know the issue with europe is that you know it's a it's a whole continent with a lot of people and probably many of you don't know but you know the population is over 750 millions you're gonna have access to 400 plus millions over 18, which are all potential clients. Uh, I have some data just for Amazon, but Amazon Europe has 300 million unique views per month, which is 50% more than the US one. So it's even a bigger market when you combine that. The other thing is in Europe, in Amazon Europe, you have 1.1 million sellers compared to 2.5 million sellers in Amazon US, meaning less competition. And also if you... If you just think about that, that there is like nine markets in Europe right now, Amazon markets, the competition is even less, meaning that if you're doing well in other markets, you're crazy if you're not trying to do anything in Europe. And a few other reasons are, you know, your, your, your company, if you're selling in your home country, it's like a local brand. But if you expand to the new continent, it's actually going to be a new company, like a new global brand, you'll be able to sell to 50 new countries in Europe. Of course, there is different languages, different currencies, but still it's less competitive and you have a lot of customers who have no idea about your product. If your competitors are not doing that, you'll be the first one, meaning you get a big market share. And the last but not the least, where actually Barack is going to help out, you order more stock, you get better pricing, better conditions. So these are few very important reasons why I should consider European 
very sure that many of the servers in the US and other markets have no idea about that. And here, I'm just giving you some data about Amazon because at HelloTax, we have 2,000 uh, e-commerce servers. 90% uh, of them are actually selling on Amazon, doing 1 million plus. And we have 15,000 e-commerce servers as subscribers, thanks to the events that we do in the space. And this is our, actually our goal number one, how to educate servers about the expansion in Europe, because we just cover VAT compliance, but you need a few more things to make it successfully to Europe. So uh, I get asked all these questions all the time. What are the blockers stopping people from going to Europe? So the first one is, and the most important is having the product. If you don't have a product, you don't need taxes, you don't need customs, you don't need logistics, you don't need any of us today. So finding the product, it's very important. And that's actually what some partners like Zonguru, Helium 10, Carbon 6, they can help you out with that. Actually, I'm not sure, Vernice, if Carbon 6 has a product resource too, but if not, then I'm sure that you guys are planning to acquire one because having the right product is the first step. And obviously such tools are gonna help you out to find the good product good market, you can see the opportunity, you can even see how much money you need to invest to go to Europe. And if you have all this data, you can make a, a plan and you can execute your plan. So having the product is important. And if you have a successful product in the US and other markets, you can compare with uh, the different markets in Europe and you can see where you can actually make an easy expansion and where it would be uh, most successful to expand there. And after we have the product, then there is a few other things that you need to consider. The first one, it's product compliance. This is something that comes even before the VAT, because if you need to set up, if you need to have a product compliance check, it might take a few months for that. So check your product compliance. There is some, so the so-called plastic walls in France, in Germany, and I have partners for that who can help you out. Then the next thing that you need to consider is the value added tax, which is the VAT, as we know it in many countries, it's similar to the sales tax in the USA. So this is what we do at Hello Tax. We have a software and uh, fiscal representatives in all the markets in Europe. And this is what we do, SaaS solution plus the managed service. Another thing that you need to consider is the fiscal representation. In some markets, you know, the tax authorities require you to pay the so-called fiscal representation insurance, which guarantees that you're gonna pay your VAT and not disappear. And the other things that you need to know is customs and logistics. So obviously Barack can help you out with the logistics. He's one of our close partners. And we have a customs partner who help you to import the stock in Europe. And the last but not the least, and probably one of the most important parts of the, your expansion to Europe and the blockers which you might uh, need to overcome is culture and language barrier. If your translation is not done properly, you're not going to sell anything. And Amazon, they started Amazon Sweden last January, and they were using some of their software to translate. And they hit so many mistakes. So never use a software. You should use a localized agency who knows how to translate it properly, how to use the uh, local localization for each market. Because even for English-speaking markets, you need to have a spe specific culture uh, or uh, like uh, language translation. Otherwise, no, you'll get in trouble. And I know it from experience because I was selling in Europe 20 markets. So make sure this is important. So if you have all these things done properly, you can make a very good uh, expansion to Europe and you can make a lot of sales. So this is what you should consider, but don't get scared, man. I have thousands of partners. So I have people who can help you for all of that. And VAT is something that we deal with at Hell Tax. So, I think I already mentioned what we're doing, but this is what we do. When you expand in Europe, you need to be tax compliant. Otherwise, you cannot sell on Amazon or, or any of the marketplace. The first thing they ask is VAT. If you don't have VAT, you cannot set up an account. It's as simple as that. So what do you need to know about VAT in Europe? There are four things that you need to consider. What's your VAT liability? And just to put it as simply as possible, this is how much VAT you own right now or for any past sales. You need to register for one or more uh, countries for VAT registration. Now it's much easier than before. You need to have a complete 
view of the goods that are actually moving from one market to one market. And the last thing you need to have complete visibility across all your sales channels. If you're selling on Amazon, see discount, Shopify, you need to report that. So this is something that you need to know. And this is the good thing because you connect your account to Hello Tax and we get all this data. We check your liability, we register you if you need to, and you can just deal with your business. And the question which uh, Borak mentioned earlier, you know, about his client. Here is the complexity chart, chart about Europe, where you should register and why, and why it's hard and why it's not. So Poland, Germany, and Italy are the easiest markets to expand in Europe. They require the less amount of documents and the process is much quicker. And in regards to which is the hardest one, Spain original documentation, not a retranslation. So this should be your last option unless you're coming from Watam or any other Spanish speaking market. So remember that Poland, but Poland is not great because they're not the big market. So Germany is probably the best one to start in Europe. And somebody would ask, okay, why the hell should I bother about VAT? I mean, I, why do you need that? I mean, like I said earlier, you have no option. I mean, if you don't have VAT, you're not gonna sell. I mean, you're not be able to sell on Amazon, for example. So the one thing which is actually good news for you guys is that before we used to have distance selling threshold, which is not valid anymore because we, Europe, the European Union introduced something called the one-stop shop, which allows you to opt in for the OSS and make sales and deliveries to clients across the European uh, from one location doing one VAT registration and one OSS registration, which is much easier. And there is actually even better news because if you use Amazon or any other marketplace, you don't need to have the OSS unless, of course, you're EU-based business because you're going to use the OSS registration of the marketplace. So for non-EU companies, it's even easier right now. And so this the distance selling trace what is not as important as before. One thing which is still valid is storing goods in any given country. If you hold stock in Germany, you need registration, VAT registration in Germany. If you hold stock in the UK, you need VAT in, in the UK. If you hold stock in Poland, you need VAT uh, number there. So this is very important to remember. Remember, if you hold stock in any given country, you must have a VAT registration and file the reports in this market. And something which I've been asked a lot recently, what about Brexit? So the one thing which is actually good news regarding Brexit is that Amazon reopened the European Fulfillment Network beginning of this year. And this allows UK sellers to fulfill orders to Europe and vice versa, as long as, uh, as the sale price is under 150 euros which is good because a lot of sellers from UK stop selling to Europe and vice versa. The one thing that you need to remember is that Amazon is going to use their, their IOSS registration to fulfill the orders and you're going to uh, make be able to actually sell in Europe. You just need to enable your marketplaces on UK in the European site. And obviously you can do it as before. Of course, you're going to pay more shipping, but still you'll be able to sell without going through customs, which is very good news for anybody who is, who's been selling a lot from the UK to Europe and vice versa. So these are some good news. And the solution that we always recommend, now when you expand to Europe, don't listen to Amazon, don't go for the multi V registration package or the so-called pan you because you get in a lot of trouble waiting because you do with different, country, different countries, different tax authorities, and you might be disappointed and you give up. So in, in, instead of giving up and starting with multiple markets, we recommend always to start with one market, UK or Germany. We recommend Germany most of the time, especially after Brexit for a few reasons, especially if you're coming from the US here or other English speaking market. The first thing, you don't need translation. Second thing, specific tax authority for US companies, meaning you get your VT much quicker. Fiscal representation, you don't need that in Germany. You don't need that in the UK, UK as well. In regards to Germany, central location in Europe, biggest Amazon market after amazon.com. So these are a few very good reasons why you should go to Germany as your first stop for expanding to Europe. And you can use that as a base. You set up your account in Amazon. If you're a non-EU company, you just need one VAT number and you can make sales to all the clients across the European Union from Germany. 
Of course, you're going to pay a little more for shipping and delivery, but this would allow you to test the different markets. And if you validate that you're selling well in Italy, Netherlands, France, whatever, then, then it would make sense to set up a second VAT number and hold your stock in the Amazon FBA and fulfill orders. And this applies not only for Amazon, but for any marketplace or channel. And like I said, the OSS registration would be needed by you guys only if you sell on Shopify because Shopify is not a marketplace or you have your own website, which is off Amazon. So the easiest solution to expand in Europe is one VAT in Germany for an Amazon and you can start selling to all the European Union clients. And of course, you need to do the VAT monthly filings, which we do on our end, but this is the easiest solution. Test the market, don't make assumptions. If you're doing great, then you can expand easily to other markets. And this would be the smart way, which would save, save, save you a lot of headache and a lot of money because you do it the smart way. You test and you scale based on your result. And the last part about what we do at HelloTax, we provide the software which was built by the founders, Christian and Christopher, they're ex-Amazon sellers. I used to be client of them and that's why uh, a lot of sellers are using them because we have the software on the front end and the menu service on the back end. You know, we need to have people who speak multiple languages and they can actually do the research for you, process your data. You just need to connect your account with us. We have Amazon Shop for integration, so we get the data. We file the report for you. You just pay the return and that's it. You need to. You don't need to deal too much with that. And we have a free VAT portal where we're gonna send that eventually. And the last thing that we're doing always when we do the webinars, because of course we would like to help out and give you some discounts when you expand to Europe. So we're giving away six free VAT registration and the total value is over $200. So if you're in doubt, get in touch. One of our guys are gonna make a consultation for you. We're gonna help you with the VAT. We're gonna connect you with all the other partners that you need to expand to Europe. And I think guys, I was the slowest. I need to cut my presentation. <laughs> but it's a good thing that we're, we're done. Now we have the questions. So let's start with, with the questions. So the first one uh, is for from Ari. For This is for actually Vanessa. Does sole stock um, account for FBA storage limits when providing restock suggestions? For example, server account limits on cubic volume, units, storage type, etc. So this is for you, Vanessa. Okay, so SoulStock helps you with the restocking suggestion and they account for the limits that your account has. And those limits change every Monday. Like every week they change if you make the right changes, if you sold the right things in your account. So it give, it takes in consideration that, which basically your restock limits are tied to the amount of cubic feet that you get allowed to send inventory to Amazon. Sometimes if you have a lower IPI, you get a certain amount of square footage. And then with the restock limits, that's an amount of unit per category. So you will have a certain amount of units per standard uh, products, then for apparel and then for hazmat. And yeah, the system takes that in consideration when it's connected to your account. We don't hear you, Nick. Okay, okay, sorry, guys. So I was thinking, you know, I, I assume that would answer your question. If not, please uh, ask again. So uh, this is actually a question from Patrick Von. Actually, Patrick is a partner of ours. They have a logistic company in Germany. This question for Burak. If Burak's need a free PO partner in Germany, get in touch. Okay, I know. No I know. Uh, by the way, okay, Burak, we, I was, I was going to say something about this. Um, there are a couple of things that people are asking um regarding like importing um generally people wants to try european market they are afraid to do that because of the language barrier sometimes the tax sometimes the import regulations so we can as a company we can act on behalf of any other foreign a foreign entity to import to europe um there are some speculations maybe you can help me on that um also uh, when you import to Europe, um, sometimes European governments, 
because in the US, we can actually off of the customer then deliver the product to Amazon FBA, and we will not be questioned about where that inventory actually went, you know? But in Europe, there are sometimes people saying that, let's say you imported like a full container of uh, computer keyboards on behalf of another company, you deliver to Amazon FBA, and then you can be, as an importer, you can be questioned where that inventory go, actually. So I don't know, do you know about this? Um, because I heard like different things, uh, when it comes to the, like small quantity, there's no problem. But sometimes uh, governments in, in Europe, they like to see as an importer, uh, where did that inventory go? Is it still under your, is it still in your warehouse? Did you ship it? Did yeah, you I mean, sell it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, no, I have a customs partner for that. So if something is not in our expertise, we don't deal with that. But you have something which is called importer on record. And we have a custom partner who deals with that because sometimes they're actually the importer of record. Sometimes you know, the seller must be doing that. But the thing is, you know, this is something that we don't cover. So whenever you know somebody asking for about customs or import, we have a partner that we recommend. And all the companies based in, in Germany as well for the same reasons, because of all the all this demand. It's Brooke, very, it's how, how do you... How, how do you say a place in Turkish? I don't know that. Çok yaşa means like... Çok yaşa. Long. Okay, uh, but, but you know the, the things are the things are different. Driving. Yeah, the things are like uh, different in Canada. Uh, we do a lot of like cross border. Um, I think if someone wants to expand international, they should really try to Canada. The CPC is kind of low versus the US market. Depends on the product, obviously. You know, depends on the uh, depends on the um, uh, search keyword search volume, as well as you know the demand. Uh, but I know that some of our customers who's doing like a good products in in us their user ratings are also transferred to canadian listings uh it's the same with europe so i think that should be like you the people should be using this as an advantage if they have an inventory in us in the 3pl then they can actually send the product to canada uh you know by truck by ups cross borders kind of easy you know people should keep that in mind okay 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 sounds good uh, you didn't one, one ask the question nick but i i kind of answered it myself <laughs> yeah yeah i mean I, I i if i don't know something i just keep silent you know i know i have a partner who deals with that so anything custom related we send them to our partner so so far we're happy and that's what we're doing actually patrick has another question for customs okay patrick nick do you know about a yuri number that sellers need to have in the to import goods out of the EU. yes actually the same customs partner is issuing the yori numbers it's pretty quickly you know you get it within a few weeks and you're allowed to actually import to europe it's a, it's around like i think it's like 200 euro one ten fee to get the yori number okay guys so let's go to the next question so we have a question from actually i think this is for andre this is from rafael how do we track affiliate sales uh, is this uh sure? I don't. I, is the question from YouTube? I don't see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, so it depends on your platform. Um, for Amazon and Shopify and some of our um, more like fleshed out integrations, it's really just plug and play. Uh, you just install. Um, well, for Amazon, it's not an app, but for Shopify or WooCommerce, you install our app in your store and just configure your settings, and we will track affiliate sales for you uh, via link or coupon code. Uh, for Amazon, you have to connect your Amazon store to Refersion, and then the tracking is um, handled automatically as well. Um, we also have custom tracking documentation available. If you have an e-com platform that uh, doesn't have a supported integration with us, you can get your developer involved and um, add some scripts to your site and send order data to us that we can um, use that data to attribute sales to affiliates. Um, so it kind of depends on what platform you're, at, um, you're on, Raphael. Okay, okay. Thank you, Andrew. So I think that was a good answer. So another question, this is for A2X from or Alexa. What channels does A2X support? I know that you guys support a lot, but probably you can give us like the, the answer about which one you guys support, which channel, marketing channels, uh, yeah, I guess, totally. I guess marketplaces. Yes. Yeah, so obviously today I was using Amazon as an example, but we do also support sellers who are selling on Shopify, eBay, Etsy, Walmart, and we've also recently just released a big commerce integration. So those are the six kind of sales channels that we can automate accounting for. Okay, one well, another question from this from Stephanie. Can I big day big date my books with A2X? 
Back date. Yes. So basically, if you sign up for A2X, obviously, you know, a lot of people might have been doing their accounting manually or incorrectly. Uh, you can actually connect A2X and go back. And so you can actually get your books in order from, you know, the beginning of the financial year and kind of then carry on going forward and staying on top of it. So cool. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And, and this is actually a good question because backdating exists in VAT as well. And we have yeah. a lot of cases with sellers who think that they did not need it VAT or anything like that. And some of them actually can go back to yours. So, so make totally. sure you guys know you have, yeah. So yeah. you just pay a fee and you, you get in trouble. So sometimes you might get your account suspended, but that's important. And it's good that everyone can do that. We can do that as well for the VAT. Uh, another question actually from Bur for Burak from, again, from Stephanie. Uh, you mentioned that there is other markets where we can actually source products from. Can you give us some examples in Europe or close to Europe? Uh, sourcing from Europe? I mean, I really hate to answer the questions like depends. And when I ask a question, a person like when they answer like depends, I hate that. But it really depends. If you buy like a, if you do textile, uh, maybe uh, towels or like, you know, the clothing, uh, shoes, turkey is a good option. Uh, some glassware, like some household items. It's good in India, uh, depends. Um, Vietnam is getting uh, popular on kind of items like some spare parts or um, some like light electronics. But, you know, even those countries mainly, uh, Taiwan is really good market actually, uh, but it uh, like electronics is good quality, but like somehow Chinese prices are like really different than any other marketplaces. It's generally cheaper. Uh, because the raw material and also the, the production equipment is made in China. So if you want to buy something from Turkey or India, most majority of those equipment machinery that manufactures the end product is made in China or the spare part from goes from China. Or um, I don't know if, if people ever travel like the Hong Kong or Canton Fair like before the COVID, but I remember when this 25% duty came out during the trump time uh, I, I i i used to see a lot of companies or factories they started to open up a an additional manufacturing plant in southeast asia uh, such as like in cambodia vietnam thailand uh, because like you know the, the 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 employment is like really cheap like you know uh, uh, versus china uh, but still a lot of material ships from China to those countries to manufacture. So it's still the same problem. Um, I would I would recommend also to visit like Canton Fair's website to source some products in, from different marketplaces. I sometimes rather using Canton Fair website versus Alibaba.com because the Canton Fair companies are mainly either like a really good trade companies or man, real manufacturers who spend money and time to attend the Canton Fair. So they take the business more serious than versus some companies are paying 50,000 RMB, which is like around $6,000 per year to be a gold member in <coughs> Alibaba. And there can be a lot of trade companies um, and you know they can switch their marketplace if there's like a new hot selling product. Like, you know, there's so many, uh, like some strange products that start selling really big amount in TikTok. And people actually source that from Alibaba. So Alibaba is not the only website I think that people can look. Um, I know that there's a, a good comp, there's a website like turkishexporter.com. It's good for Turkey, uh, but I can do some extra research. What other good websites for India, uh, Pakistan and Vietnam, but whatever people going to buy from different marketplaces or a new factory, definitely hire an inspection company something between 100 to 200 dollars and go and inspect get their business licenses get their uh, quality uh, check their warehouses what other companies they manufacture product for uh, maybe get the sample um, you know from the uh, not like you know when people order sample the factory makes like a perfect sample but if you go and pick up some product from the actual manufacturing line and see that then it's a it's a different like you know mass production versus the um sample again i kind of answered like more than someone asked but um sometimes there's not just like one particular answer for that question so um 
And if people can start traveling, definitely go visit local trade shows. Depends on the, the category that you source in the product from. Okay, th thanks, Brock. And you mentioned TikTok, and actually we have a question for TikTok. This is for Andre. Do you guys help to find like brand ambassador in the top affiliates on TikTok? That's um, so we actually have... from Christina. Cool, thank you. Um, we have a tool on the platform called Affiliate Discovery. Um, it uh, is a partnership with the company uh, Publisher Discovery. So it scrapes the internet for all affiliate links on all websites. So it's more uh, publisher oriented, um, not specifically influencer oriented. Um, so that's a tool that you can utilize on the platform, but it doesn't really help with finding like influencers on specific platforms. If that's something that um, you did need assistance with, we have plenty of agency partners that we can make a recommendation for or like help you make a partnership with. They can, um, depending on your needs, get you in touch with the right affiliates or the right influencers or help grow the program, um, things like that. Okay, okay, sure, Andrew. And just one tip because recently I was in an event and one guy told me affiliate marketing influencer marketing doesn't work and i told him okay how many influencers did you try and he said five i said man you need <laughs> to find 100 and then you can make a decision so that's that's actually it's a very good question don't give up you just need to find from 100 you need 10 good partners and you can make a lot of money and one question actually for for vanessa from uh andrea you mentioned inventory you mentioned reimbursement what is another thing that we should consider on Amazon right now that we're missing out. Um, so in the in the theme of maximizing profit, that was probably the two easiest ones to uh, check. One thing, and this is this probably doesn't apply to everybody out there, but it, I was shocked when I found about this thing is that I don't know you guys, but probably we are very uh, confident about the reports that Amazon gives us, right? So if we want to see our information on fulfillment, we go there and download the fulfillment report. If we want to see the business report, then we go and download the business report and see how many sales we got. So one of the things that I discovered recently with a client was that Amazon was charging them an, an, a weird amount of money. Right. It's like, okay, they got a charge of thirteen hundred and forty five dollars. And you're like, oh, that's weird. They don't know about that. Like it, the explanation of the case, what was other uh, expenses? And because they were doing this through ABA and they were doing like the bookkeeping of like, OK, we need to put this in our in our books and stuff like that. They didn't know what those charges were. And it ended up being something that we're still trying to figure out what it is. So this opened the eye for me of like, okay, Amazon gets the, the full um, authority and they have the all the power to change the information in our account. Meaning if they change something that will reflect in the report right away. So you should be paying attention to the charges that Amazon is making in your account and really understanding what are those about. Because when we went there and we tried to investigate what these charges were, the payments team, which is the one in charge of that, they weren't, be, they weren't able to tell us like, this is because X and X. They weren't, like not at all. So that was extremely concerning. And I have only seen, see, seen that in that account. And as of now, they are down $50,000. So Amazon is being taking small charges, like, well, sm not small. There are some that are almost $5,000, but they were taking charges out of the account and putting, putting them as an other expenses. And they still haven't figured out what is that charge for. So Again, to maximize profit and things that are happening right now, I would think that paying attention to your numbers and the inefficiency, inefficiencies in your business is the most important thing. Then if you want to improve and maximize revenue and profitability, obviously optimizing for um, the back end of your listings, getting more ranking, getting more indexation, appealing to the Hispanic market in the U.S., in the US is a huge topic that I cover all the time. 
that you can do. Like right now, there are 30 million users using Amazon in the Spanish experience. That means that they are using the website and the app in Spanish. So that's something that will drive revenue if you learn how to be optimized for, for them. But yeah, probably those are my two main that I'll really, really encourage you guys to pay attention to. Okay. Okay, Vanessa, I think it's a good ending. We don't have any more questions, guys. So just to summarize, know, know your numbers. You know, if, you, if you don't know your numbers, you have no idea what you're doing. Affiliate marketing, if you're not doing that, you should try right now. Logistics, you know, plan properly. We have the experts here. As far as Europe, you guys are crazy if you're not trying Europe. You know, it's good. It's not only good to go on vacation in the summer, it's good for business. And the last thing before we end, I'm not sure who of you guys is going to watch football, soccer, but we have the World Cup starting on Sunday. So let's give some forecasting. Who's going to be the next world champion? And we can have it on video. So let's start with Devon. Who is going to be the next champion in the we world? Don't, we, I call it. I call it soccer. I mean, I'm soccer. Sorry, okay, I'm gonna, yeah. yeah on, okay. That's not soccer number one. We, we yeah, Europeans yeah, soccer take football. that very serious. It's football. First, it learn about football. that. Okay, I, I, know, I know. Uh, I'll and, say Germany. Germany. Okay, so we have Germany for everyone. Then, uh, Burak, who is your choice? What do you think, man? We're not even there. Yeah, yeah no, I know, man. It doesn't matter. Give me what. Tell me I, what you I, think. I think I would go. I don't know. You, who's yours? You tell me first. Man, I, I, I'm, I'm the last one. <laughs> I'll, uh, even, I'll even give you the score in the goal score. Uh, yeah, probably, probably I would, say, I would go like Portugal. Okay, Portugal. Then we have Vanessa. Vanessa, who is your choice? Um. I hope that Brazil wins. Okay, bro. Brazil, Andre, what do you think? Who's going to be the soccer champion in Qatar? Um, I don't watch much football or soccer, um, so yeah. I looked up the Vegas yeah, no, odds. No. And Brazil has the best chance, so I'll go with Brazil. Okay, yeah. you know, okay. So you know what would be the best, Nick? What would be the best final? Like uh, Argentina versus Portugal and see who's really the best. Either Messi or Ronaldo. Unfortunately, yeah, those guys are getting old. But problem is actually we are getting old with them. So I have a problem yeah. with that. I have a problem. Like, you know, I yeah, still man. feel like Cristiano Ronaldo is like 27, 28 years old, but he's like 38 already. And, you know, that's yeah, man. Annoying. Yeah, man. Yes. So I get, I'll go last. I mean, here, here is my Nostradamus, no forecast. Argentina, one. Brazil, zero. And the goal scorer is Neymar by Ongo. So let's see, you know. <laughs> Bro, what? I'm, 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 yeah, man. Like, I don't. You, I don't, you don't you like drinking? Neymar. I mean, what? What are you drinking? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Nothing to be honest. Can you imagine if I'm drinking? Yeah, I mean, Ellen, it's 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 early for Ellen. It's kind of late for us. It's like what 10, 20 p.m. here. Ten twenty-five. What time right, is it? Here? Actually, yeah, nine nine twenty-seven. Oh, okay. But latest for me. Okay, guys. Yeah. So, guys, no. Th thank you for joining you today. I think we've got a lot of tips for everybody who's gonna watch the recording. We're gonna. I send the recording to everybody tomorrow. And just to summarize, now we have some giveaways from Carbon 6 2000, free reimbursement without fees, 2000 from Hello Tax, six free VAT registrations uh, from Refersion. We also have like a discount. Let, let me just read for you guys. You'll be getting like 15% off their enterprise and enterprise plus plans. And we're going to include also the giveaways from eight weeks and we will and first get eventually in the email so wait for the email you can get some discounts and you can kick it off so thank you guys thank you everyone for waking up early thank you Brock, for staying late with me and vanessa and andre you guys enjoy the wednesday two more days and it's weekend so thank, thank you, you guys all right thank Have you so much day. guys thank take you care. care take care